Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Cold Hard Truth Podcast. I'm Jack Smith. I'm Shrikar Rajendran. And I'm Anish Gupta. And boys, we finally actually have some NFL news to talk about. We're going to get into the Julio Jones trade in this episode. Shrikar's already made a video on it, but this is Anisha and I first time to talk about it on the podcast for you guys. And then after that, a new thing that we're going to get into, over-under predictions for you know three NFL teams. On our Instagram, we had you guys kind of send in some teams you wanted us to talk about in this little segment and we picked a couple if you like it we'll get in some more later but I really want to get right into it because we haven't had news in a very very long time Julio Jones was traded to the Tennessee Titans I believe it was Julio in a sixth or a seventh for a second and a fourth uh, from the Tennessee Titans to the Atlanta Falcons so Anish why don't you start us off since Shrikar's already talked about it on a video what did you think about this trade for both sides and also for Julio Jones so for a guy like Julio Jones, I mean, we did we like this is a worse package than what the Texans got for DeAndre Hopkins. Now, granted, age obviously and all that, right? Julio was coming off an injury plagued year. He's also a lot older, uh, but still, I mean, you know, it was kind of inevitable. My only thing with the Falcons is you. I mean, everyone knew that you had a choice. You had a choice between Matt Ryan and you had a choice between Julio Jones because obviously you were in cap hell. Uh, Matt Ryan, I think, is due to make. I think around 40 mil, he takes a 40 mil cap hit. And I think Julio Jones is around 15 to 18. I don't know the exact number. Uh, it depends on incentives and all that, but I really think they made the wrong choice. Like I, I think it for, you know, you really could have taken a guy like Justin Fields and tried to move on from Matt Ryan. Like, I, and I know he's still productive, you know, he's, he's been solid. Like that's, pro, I mean, a pretty good word to use since uh, 2018 and 2016. Those were two really, really good years, uh, but he's been solid since then. But again, like I've said this countless times on the pod, he's not going to get you over the top anymore. And I've also said this, I don't think he's going to win a Super Bowl with Atlanta or at least even get there. Cause I think, uh, I think there's still that Super Bowl hangover from 28 to three. Uh, That's one thing that I've mentioned. I mean, I know new coach, but I just doubt this Falcons team. I mean, there's always problems on defense and even now there's still too many questions. So Matt Ryan, I just don't know if he's the guy that's going to lead you, but Hey, they made their choice. They got rid of Julio Jones. I mean, Albeit, you know, Calvin Ridley is amazing and, you know, you got Kyle Pitts. So your receiving core is still pretty good. Russell Gage is also very underrated in my eyes. But uh, again, you know, to get only that much, I think, you know, it, you're right. Like, I think we were talking about it earlier. It would have been hard to get a first considering that everyone knew that you were going to have to trade him. Uh, but, you know, for the Titans, this is a huge move. This is a huge deal because, you know, I think we kind of talked about it, like Josh Reynolds being their second best wide receiver. Uh, you know, Corey Davis leaving, it wasn't that big of a loss because he never really lived up to his number five overall pick potential, but he had some flashes. Like last year, I think he had 900 uh, something yards. He had a couple big games, you know, splash games, uh, but he was never that consistent guy or especially at where he was picked. Uh, so, you know, I'm kind of glad that, you know, he's kind of maybe getting another shot with New York. Uh, but for the Titans, I mean, now like, I mean, pick your poison. I mean, you got Ryan Tannehill throwing you the ball. I still think he's the top 10 quarterback. And you've got Derrick Henry, who's one of the best, if not the best running back in the NFL. And you've got Julio and AJ Brown on the outside. And I think Josh Reynolds, he's very big, but you could also, I've seen the Rams use him in the slot sometimes. So that would be also very lethal. So it's honestly a pick your poison. Um, I'll kind of let Jack touch on it a little bit more, but I think the trade was great uh, for the Titans and for the Falcons. Obviously, you're kind of starting that cap rebuild, right? Getting out of that cap hole, uh, you know, and going a little bit younger, you know, because Calvin Ridley is going to be a franchise corner, cornerstone for years to come. He's spectacular. Uh, and again, Kyle Pitts, right? You've got him on a rookie deal and everyone's expecting him to just come out there and shine. Uh, which I'm hoping he does. And I expect him to uh, and expect a little video from Jack. I'll spoil it a little bit to come out soon, but uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that. I, I want to touch on uh, what it means for the Titans a little bit later, like, you know, in terms of team implications, but I'll let Jack go ahead first. Yeah. Before I give my two cents, Shrikar, do you want to throw in a little bit about the matter? I know you've talked about it in a video, but. Yeah. Um, hopefully we can link the video somewhere, but I talked about this separately. Anish, you mentioned Arthur Smith being in town now, and I agree with you. I honestly would have went with uh, Julio Jones over Matt Ryan because personally bringing in a new regime, cause they have a new GM too. I personally like it. If you have a new quarterback and not, you're not hanging with an older guy, especially with a new offensive, with an offensive coach. I think that's why I would have stuck with Julio, but keep in mind, like the Falcons were pretty much put in cap hell by the yeah. old regime. Like they had to make this move just to sign their draft class. Like, 
I don't blame this one bit on the new regime at all. So um, honestly, I think it did work out the way the Falcons wanted to, albeit they could have gotten more value, but they did what they could uh, for the Titans. doesn't really need to be explained. It was a great move for them. Uh, that pushes them probably to contender status. I think they're a top four team in the AFC. Personally, I'd put them right up there with the Browns, Bills, Chiefs, um, and it's going to be an interesting battle between the Colts and the Titans for that division. Uh, I, me and Anish put a bet on literally, it. I bet on the Titans. Two days after me. the trade went through, we were yep. at Jack's house, and we literally placed a bet on who's going to win the division. I've got the Colts. He's got the Titans. I got the Titans. But yeah, uh, we'll so that, I want to save my, my team implications for after Jack's uh, little spill. So, yeah, I'm going I'm to pass it to Jack, though. I don't think it's as simple to say as like they should have chose Matt Ryan because think about it, which player out of the two was expressing their, their like just heavy disagreement with the way the Falcons were were run and the way they wanted out. Like Matt Ryan didn't say a word about wanting out and yet Julio Jones publicly said he was out of there. Like I know it was were trade rumors before he said that. I know because, because I, I I almost guarantee he went to Atlanta saying he wanted to be traded. Like in the way that he talked about, it it seems like he's felt this way for a while. Matt Ryan, there hasn't been a peep out of him about wanting out of Atlanta. So like, yeah, in a perfect world, like who would you rather get rid of Matt Ryan? Sure. But Julio Jones really forced their hand. Yeah. I mean, so it's like, I don't think it's as simple as that. Um, and also, like, the fact that, yeah, it's, they got less for DeAndre Hopkins. They got less for Julio Jones than uh, Houston got for DeAndre Hopkins. But also, DeAndre Hopkins didn't say, I'm out of there on live TV. Like, so it kind of – it makes sense that they got less for him. And he's also a little bit older, too. And I think it's kind of funny uh, how Hopkins was talking about how no second-round pick is going to do what Julio and DeAndre Hopkins can do, um, which I thought was, was pretty interesting. Um, but uh, I – I like the trade a little bit for both sides because Atlanta, they're not going to win anything this year. And really after drafting Pitts, Julio was kind of an embarrassment of riches. So like to get at least something for him now was kind of smart. And especially, you know, needing to sign the draft class and at least just have a little bit of that money. It's a good move. And for Tennessee, uh, they were the one, they were the contender that like just threw out their line. They, they, they were going fishing and it's, it's a really smart move. I mean, they're a second round pick is, not really a guarantee and a fourth round pick is honestly in this day and age really a lot less of a guarantee so you know taking those two picks of players that you know could be good to trade for a trade for the potential of literally winning a super bowl i I like the move i like the boldness and i think that um we talk about confidence a lot and kind of instilling Mm -hmm. confidence in your players and the way that can happen trading future picks for the team that you have now i i would assume gives a lot of confidence uh, to the team and especially for Ryan Tannehill them saying here you go have Julio Jones like legitimately this offense is already dangerous and I I'm of the belief that Ryan Tannehill is what caused this offense to be great again not yep. Derek Henry. yeah I agree with you there so mm-hmm. I mean who are you going to stop like yep. uh, who, who are you going to stop are you going to stop AJ Brown well then Julio Jones is going to go off you're going to stop Derek Henry well it makes it a lot easier for them to throw the ball now something they didn't do against the Ravens in the playoffs last year so I, I really like the move for the Titans and I think it, it was a smart move uh, for the Falcons. And while in a perfect world, would we like to say move on from Matt Ryan instead? Sure. But Julio kind of forced their hand a little bit. So it's good. They actually got something out of it. Um, and I didn't think they'd get, I thought, you know, there might've been a chance where they didn't get a second round pick. Um, but I didn't think they were going to get more than a second round pick. So a second and a fourth, I think that they kind of salvaged that that deal a little bit. So good trade for both sides. Atlanta, I didn't think was going to be good, and this won't make them any better. Tennessee, I thought, was kind of on the verge, and that kind of jumps them up. I, I don't know if I'll say above the Colts yet, Shrikar, but, you know, Fair it enough. definitely – they're, they're much more playoff kind of hopefuls and contenders now than I think they were a week oh, ago. Yeah, 100%. Like there's – so two things. One, I'm sure there's going to be questions from people watching this, like, oh, how, why were the Falcons in cap hell? Like for the Saints, for example, right? They were so below it mm-hmm. and they were able to do all these voidable year contracts. So the difference between the Falcons and the Saints were the Saints had a bunch of their deals expiring this year. The Falcons yep. didn't. So that was kind of why they really couldn't do anything this year. So I'm sure a couple of years down the road, they'll kind of, you know, start that cap rebuild. This is just the start. Uh, but like they said, uh, I think Shrikar mentioned how they just needed enough money to sign their own draft class. This was just a bad year. Uh, and like Jack said, you know, I was going to go into team implications. So for the Falcons, like you said, 
just, I mean, there's always upside, right? You want to see how good Ridley can do with another year, right? He had a mm-hmm. huge, uh, I think it was a second year last year from the, or third, it might've been his I third year. He was a third year last year. Yeah. He was drafted mm-hmm. 2018. Yep. So, I mean, he's just continuing to get better, better every year. So I think this fourth year is going to be another jump. Uh, and Kyle Pitts, again, the, the sky's the limit for him. So, yep. you know, for Atlanta fan, Atlanta fans, at least be excited for that. Uh, and for Tennessee, I think, again, you know, there were a lot of people who were thinking this team could kind of take a step back, right? You know, go, they were 11-5 last year, uh, just won the division over in the via tiebreaker. Uh, people were thinking it was, it was a 9-7 kind of season, you know, maybe even miss the playoffs, you know, in that tier with the Pats and the Chargers. That was a lot of where a lot of people had them. This throws them into a new fire because, if, again, like Jack kind of mentioned with Julio and A.J. Brown, I mean, one can get you any type of, uh, you know, 50-50 ball. And then A.J. Brown is so, so versatile. I think people underestimate that. Like, you know, when I was watching Tannehill film, just seeing w- how much they used A.J. Brown in the slot, outside, different types of routes, drag, crossers. I mean, like, you know, but if you have Julio and A.J. on the outside, one's going to always demand safety help. So you're kind of you're kind of stuck. Like, you know, what, what are you going to run? It's tough uh, for defensive coordinators. So that's very lethal. And I think they're, uh, I think, I don't know who, if Jack or Shikra said this, but they're in that tier, right. Of biggest threat to the chiefs. I think it's between the Browns, the Titans, uh, the Colts and the Ravens. I think those are the, the four. Bills. bills. Oh, sorry. Yeah, of course. I forgot the bills. So those, I think those are the five teams that could potentially dethrone, right. I think those are five that, you know, you would always throw out there. And I mean, if you want to put them in order, I think the Titans could be the biggest threat. I mean, like, you know, there's still some questions on defense, right? Like Bud Dupree, how good can he do, right? You know, without being in that Pittsburgh front seven. Who do they have a corner too? That's a bigger yeah, issue now. Yep. Caleb Barley yeah, boomer bust. bust. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they have a lot of, I think a lot more questions, which is why I would pick a couple of those teams more, which is why, again, I have the Colts uh, still winning this division, but it's, I mean, it's going to be really hard to stop that offense. That's yeah. for sure. And, and, and on defense, you're right. Yeah. If, if Dupree like booms and so does Caleb Farley, then, I mean, they're set. Yeah. So, yeah. And then I think uh, one thing that uh, Jack mentioned was the faith in Ryan Tannehill. Yep. I totally agree. I was just going to finish my point on that. Like that, I think the offense runs through him. Uh, He has been, he's honestly kind of lifted them into this height. Like I think uh, Mariota was just limiting them in so many ways. And I think Tannehill is just more talented as a passer. He can also run. So uh, offense runs through him in my opinion, and he's been very vital to them. And they're saying, Hey, we give you another weapon. Now go, you know, get us past the AFC championship. I think that's what they're asking. I think for the Titans, they have Super Bowl aspirations. So let's see if they can do it. Yeah. Uh, Trigar, we know you didn't get to talk a lot in that segment, but this upcoming segment, <laughs> uh, maybe you guys get to talk a little bit more before we get onto that. Uh, in the comments, let us know what you thought of the Julio Jones trade. We'd love to hear from you guys. If you're on YouTube, uh, leave a comment. Also, if you enjoyed that little bit where we finally got to talk about some NFL news for the first time in a really long time, uh, leave a like, hit the subscribe button if you want more content like this, weekly podcasts and other videos like Streetcar's reaction. But our next segment is over under predictions. We've got three teams and their Vegas odds for how many for their you know projected win total. Some of them have you know a half win thrown in, so you have to over under. But on the some that there's there's one that we'll get into later that's an even number, so you can push if you want. But to start it off, your San Francisco 49ers regard. Vegas odds project them at 10 and a half wins. Are you going over or are you going under? Okay. Let me start by saying this. If Jimmy Garoppolo stays healthy the entire season, I don't think we're going to see Trey Lance start a game. Maybe we won't even see him thrown in. Mm-hmm. With that said, I'm going to take the over. I'm going to say they go over 10 and a half wins. Uh, if I had to make a pinpoint you know, estimate, I'd say 12 wins. Uh, and I know it's a little bit inflated. 12 and five. I think 12 and five. Because here's the thing. Again, a lot of key players coming back, Nick Bosa included. Uh, the defensive line is still looking good. You got... Uh, Bosa, Ford, Kinlaw, uh, Ebucom, you got Maurice Hurst, Arden Key. It, it's a deep defensive line for sure. You got a great linebacking core with Dre Greenlaw and Fred Warner. Um, the secondary is my only concern here because opposite of Jason Verrett, Jason Verrett is a question mark of his own, but opposite of Jason Verrett, you know, that cornerback two spot, it's pretty thin. Uh, safety is another question there. So We'll see how the secondary does, but I think it'll be like 2019. If the defensive line does its job, it makes the secondary's job that much easier. So, and again, the offense, it's Kyle Shanahan. Kyle Shanahan is just an absolute offensive wizard. So I'm really not as worried about that side of the ball as I am the defensive side of the ball. 
Um, but I think if everything, if everyone stays healthy, I'm knocking on wood right now. If everyone stays healthy, knowing the injury luck of the Niners, it's a tough thing to say, but, um, if they all stay healthy, I think this is a real deal contender. I think this is a 12 win football team. And I think this team can make some real noise in the playoffs as well. So I'm going to hit the over here. So I don't, okay. But no, like what if sort of conditions you're There's going, no, over I'm sure. going, I'm going over. Okay, I'm going over. Got it. All right, Jack, you want to take it? Yeah, I'm going to take the over as well. I've, I haven't made it like a secret. I think the Niners are going to be a really good team this season. And I think they have honestly, other than the Bucks and, you know, the Packers with Aaron Rodgers, maybe the team I'm like looking towards most for the Super Bowl bid from the NFC. Wow. Um, I've never heard this much praise from Jack before. This is like, hallelujah. Yeah, he man. usually, he usually hates. Actually, no, he's, he's shown some love to our teams, but like he's, well, I mean, I like, told you this before. It. I think the like, Browns, show love, but like, then the Browns like, but might be them. my Super Bowl pick this year. And I wouldn't be surprised. Wow. Like if I make up, if I make a bunch of different brackets like if i make a handful of brackets one of them definitely will have the browns versus the niners in the super bowl which <laughs> hey i'd love to so see that upset. that would be so i'd fun. love to see I that it. so funny i hate <laughs> it that that would be an all-time podcast episode. i'm going to la that if that happens crazy. streetcar and i are going to la yeah that we'll, would, we'll that, that would literally be an happen. all-time like great podcast episode is be so three dope. super bowl browns versus niners please make it happen make it happen hey man football god that would be amazing but like I said, and that could be the mediator. Like, who, yeah, exactly. Who could be the deciding factor. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm taking the over. I think 12 wins. I, I want to say 12 wins, but knowing the NFL, maybe I'll say 11. And also it's, it's important to note, like that's not a 12 and four that's 12 and five this year yeah. with the extra game. So I'm going to take the over because I think like 11 or 12, I really believe they can get to that 11 or 12, but Vegas has got it in a really, really good spot. Like 10 and a half is the perfect number for the Niners. Cause I'm like, Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, maybe they win 10 and I'm like, Oh great. That's, you know, right below. (laughs) So I'm going to, I'm going to take the over. I, I, and I think that they're not going to win the division. I've said that before. I don't think they're winning the division, but I think they get further than the Rams in the playoffs. And I'm going to stick by that. I think they get the over at 11, maybe 12 wins. Um, but look for them to make also a big playoff push. This might surprise you. I'm going to take the under. Like, wow. I'm, I'm going right. to take the under. And I, look, I've always, you know, I've always believed in the Niners, what they've been doing for years now. And, you know, even that 2019 season, I was high on them when they were coming up. I think Kyle Shanahan is very amazing. We have to keep in mind he's only had one winning season. And I know the injuries have piled up. I know it's true. Uh, But there have been games where I've questioned sometimes this play calling. We all know the two Super Bowls. We all know it. So here's, okay. And the problem, it's the number. That's why I want, like, I think they'll have a winning season. So like, don't get me wrong, but I, I, you know, I've said 10 and seven ever since just, I've been saying 10 and seven and that's the problem. The number is 10 and a half. So I've been saying 10 and seven. So don't get me wrong. It's no like, you know, severe under thing. And I also, again, Jimmy Garoppolo, he kind of lost me in that fourth quarter of the Super Bowl. I mean, you know, I was, I was telling people, remember, I, I was high on him. Like, you know, he was winning the games. He was doing what he needed to do. But that fourth quarter, I mean, 13 yards. And then, of course, the overthrow that everyone mentions. He really lost me there. I mean, you know, he had like one good half all year. It was against the Jets, right? Other than that, there wasn't anything spectacular, right? I, I think we can agree on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, this year, obviously, it was injury plagued, but. Uh, I'm going to stick with 10 and seven. And I agree with Shrikar. I, I think I told him this too. We, I was discussing it with a couple Niner fans as well. I don't think Trey Lance starts a game if Jimmy G plays the whole year or sorry, is healthy. I just don't think so. Um, you're right. They're going to get a bunch of players back. The secondary does cause some concerns for me. Uh, but Nick Bosa is honestly a top five to seven pass rusher in the NFL. Like Plus, I think he's that talented. I think so. it's, I think there's also, you got to kind of note that Robert Sala is gone. Like, yeah, I know mm-hmm. the Niners, they've got a ton of pieces on defense, but yeah we haven't seen it come together without Sala. So I think exactly. that's who knows D'Amico that. Ryan's D'Amico Ryan's was the former linebacker coach. And he was really playing a great hand in helping Fred mm-hmm. Warner become who he is. Drake Greenlaw too. He helped in his development. So I but trust it, it comes Ryan's. a point where you're leading a whole defensive unit, yeah. not just and I, the I linebackers. Also yeah. division wise. I also agree with Jack. I've said this too. I don't think they win the division, but I think the Cardinals showed me a lot when they beat them week one. I think they like, they came to play and I think they'll come to play again. Like, you know, the 49ers had always owned the Cardinals before this year. They really surprised me. Both the games were close. And I think Kyler was banged up in week 16 when they played again. He might've been the Niners won that game, but yeah, I think he was banged up a little bit. 
Um, and all the Seahawks games are always going to be close, yeah, even Seahawks though I think they've gotten always worse. Close. They always and my, they always take the home one. Yep. Like they, except the one year, the one year the Niners uh, uh, beat them at uh, Seattle, but they always usually take the home one. So mm-hmm. it's going to be really tough. And I think the or Rams we just get swept. I don't think the Rams are going to get swept this year. So I, that's why I I'm going to take the under. Now again, we'll see no, that. like th- this is me not like not having faith because Debo Samuel is going to go crazy. But um, <laughs> I think they go ten. I think they go ten and seven, which is why. I'm picking the under here. Like I'm firm on 10 and seven. So that's, that's a fair under. I mean, yeah. like uh, that's cool. Also, I think it's, it's interesting to note, you know, Richard Sherman still hasn't signed with anyone. Yep. Yeah. Like he's looking, he's looking for a contender, though. a legendary um, cornerback. Like that just hey, shows we'll you how him. important speed is we'll in today's NFL. Like that is literally the perfect case. And he said for. he was going to wait until after the draft. Cause he hoped his market would open back up, but that just wasn't how are the, the case. Niners not just throwing a deal out there for him. Hey, we'll give him. I do. We'll I, him I don't really know. Like come over here. I don't know. Yeah, that, that's just crazy to me. But uh, Anish, why don't you start us off with our next team, the Los Angeles oh, Chargers. So and so this is the only team that's got like a, an actual just solid whole number. Yeah. The Chargers over under for Vegas, their projected wins is nine. So Vegas projecting them for nine wins. Are you taking the over or are you taking the under? I wish they push? did eight and a half because then I would have said nine. Like, well, I you think can push. I, you can push. You can push. Okay. I'm thinking. I think I'm gonna push because, like, this. I think this is a solid nine, nine and eight team. I think Herbert's gonna take that next step again. I mean, because there was a step. Like, he was pressured the most out of any quarterback yep. in the entire NFL, and he still broke the rookie touchdown record. Albeit he had more games than Baker, but you know, it's okay. I'll take my bias out of it but yeah i think they go nine and eight uh i love what they did uh you know Corey lindsley was a great signing i love how they beefed up the offensive line with rashawn slater Uh, i love keenan allen i loved him before the whole cal stuff i always loved him so he's gonna be great uh he also went to the best school in the nation um but yeah keenan allen is great i think mike williams is always a great wide receiver too uh that defense that defense is you know with derwin james coming back just you know knock on wood for him i mean just i mean so so much talent so uh, yeah, I think they push nine and eight. Uh, Herbert's definitely going to, I hope, going to be in that MVP discussion. I mean, he's so talented. So, yeah, I'm going to throw it in nine and eight. That's I'm going to say they push. We chose two teams that have absolutely horrible injury luck. Uh, yeah. I'm going to side with Anish here. I'm actually going to push nine wins. Uh, for one, this division is actually you know tougher than people think. I don't think the Chargers are going to sweep anyone in this division. Um, Broncos, I think they're going to split. Chiefs could get swept. They could split. Um, Raiders, I think they might split too. And another thing, obviously, Justin Herbert um, pretty much just lit the world on fire after that rookie season. Uh, it was a strong offseason, uh, particularly, as Anish said, beefing up the offensive line, Matt Filer, Corey Lindsley, Rashawn Slater. Um, I like all of those moves. But again, it's just it's just health. Can I trust the Chargers to stay healthy? I mean, I don't and think so. And in the so. fourth quarter, or can they, like, contain themselves? Exactly. They've and got a new a, coach this year, new too. New coach, Come on. Adam Staley. Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm pushing it's, nine. I, I don't yeah, think- it's tough to say. It's tough to say they get into the double digits. He's so. been a favorite for coach of the year, though. Have you seen that for odds? Yeah, yeah I'm not surprised by that. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not totally surprised, but Herbert and all that, I wouldn't be surprised either. But yeah. but you know, it's always hard to pin a coach of the year because it always it's always about you know maybe a worst to first or the coach of the year is always just the coach of the again, team that that has like the unexpected jump. So like predicting the biggest it is rise, stupid. yeah, yeah. Uh, it's there's no point in predicting that. But you, I'm a push here. You guys are weak taking the taking the easy way out, going with the push. I, I genuinely was <laughs> like, I can't go. I, I, I don't know. I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say over. I think they come okay. second in the division. I think they win ten games, and I think that, like, over. And then if they push, that's not that's not too bad. Um, I think I, I want to say ten games in, in the vein where I'm thinking the Niners win twelve or they win eleven or they're kind of right there. The Chargers are in between that nine and that ten, and and I'll, you know. I'll just say that they win that 10th that game. And I say they go over because I think this defense is going to take a big step up. I think this team will just under Brandon Staley alone. We're going to have second year of Justin Herbert with an actual offensive line uh, for the first time, which is going to be pretty nice. Um, they still, Austin Eckler is one of the most underrated running backs. Um, and I think that him. behind an yep. offensive line too, we don't know what we can even see from him. Keenan Allen, uh, Mike Williams on defense too. Like it's, they can run a lot of the same stuff that they ran with the Rams last year. Because think about it, the Rams had good pass rush and a lot of DBs to use. And the same thing is there um, in LA right now with they run a know, lot of nickel. So uh, yeah, this, and and just with Joey Bosa and Melvin Ingram and all the pass rushers they have. I think 
Kenneth Murray, Kenneth or Kenneth Murray for a second year, and all the guys that they have in, in the DB room, and hopefully Derwin James can stay healthy, and because he 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 would be just literally the dream weapon, yeah, for uh for Brandon Staley to use. So I, I really think that he will elevate this team more than any of the other coaches this off season that like kind of went to new teams. I think he was probably like, you know, maybe he wasn't like my favorite hire or the best hire, but I really think that he'll do the most to elevate his team in year one, especially because he's also going into maybe the best situation of any of them. So I think he elevates this team and I think they're a 10 win team. And, you know, if not a nine win team, that's, that's not too bad. So I'll take the over, you know, maybe I should take the push final four games. Just want to throw that out last. Yeah. Uh, and, And they don't have Anthony Lynn, which to be honest, any, any team would benefit from not having Anthony Lynn as the coach, especially late in games. Um, so I'll take the over. Um, but as we wrap up this episode, we have our last team, a really polarizing one, I thought. The Jacksonville Jaguars sitting at six and a half projected wins. Uh, Shrikar, do you want to start us off on this one? I think out of the three teams that we had, the Niners, Chargers, and the Jags, I think the Jags were the easiest for me to bet on. I'm going to go under here. Um, again, my real concern is with Urban Meyer. I've said it all off season, but I just have a lack of faith in his transition to the NFL from what we've seen so far, you know, whether it was drafting Travis Etienne when James Robinson just had a breakout year and you draft him to just be a third down back or whether it was signing Tim Tebow off the baseball field to play tight end as a camp body. I mean, I don't, I, I just don't think there's an established direction for this team, even after they drafted Trevor Lawrence. And again, Me going under on the Jags isn't a knock on Trevor Lawrence at all. It's really about a supporting cast, especially his coaching staff. Because again, Urban Meyer, if anyone, would be the one to take this Jaguars organization. I just don't like to say it, but I just don't have much faith in him at all to really uplift or put this Jaguars franchise in the right direction after what I've seen this offseason. But I won't jump to conclusions. But I'm going to go under. Wouldn't be surprised if the Jags are picking inside the top 10, maybe even picking inside the top five again. But, I mean, this team is uh, two to three, maybe four years away from being real deal contenders, um, especially with Trevor Lawrence. So I'm going to go under here. Anish? This is going to surprise you. So it's so random. I randomly thought, I kid you not, I randomly thought about this in the shower the other day. I was like, <laughs> I'm telling you, I swear to you. I was like, how many wins can Trevor Lawrence take this jack? I'm tell- I was so random. And I'm telling you, the number is so perfect because I have them getting seven wins. And I know that sounds so crazy. Hear me out. The Jags won. We're always close in games last year. Okay, they went one in 15, but they were, ter- they were close in a lot of games. Minnesota, Cleveland. I mean, there were so many games that they were close in. That's one. Two, I think Trevor Lawrence, again, someone who's watched him a lot in college and been frustrated by him a lot, he is a de- he's the definition of a winner. And he, this is a weird comparison, but he reminds me a lot. His mentality reminds me a lot about Baker Mayfield. I don't know why, but I see this type of Baker Mayfield rookie year in him. Like Baker took an 0-16 team to seven wins. I think he does a similar thing. I think he takes a one in 15 team to seven wins. I think they gut out some upsets and I, I don't know why, but I'm taking the over and only on set. Like it's six and a half. That's why I'm taking the over. I think they go seven and 10. I think that's, I don't know. I was going to say that as a hot take in another episode, but this just presented itself. So uh, I don't want to spill too much. Cause I, I do have another hot take on the Jags, but I, I like what they have. Like, I think they've got some really underrated pieces and Obviously, I'm betting on Urban Meyer, who is just such a wild card. But I just think Trevor Lawrence, I mean, he has been a winner throughout his football career. And it's just so hard for me to believe. I mean, we've seen guys come out the gate and do it. Andrew Luck, Justin Herbert, Baker Mayfield. These these guys have all come in and at least uplifted their teams in some sort of way. So the greatest prospect since Andrew Luck, why can't he do it? So I'm going to, I'm going to believe I'm going to take the over here literally by half game. I'm literally taking seven and 10. That was my, that was going to be my Jaguars prediction. So I guess I spoiled it. Uh, but yeah, taking the over. Yeah. I'm, I'm shocked by that. This was also the easiest one for me. I'm taking the under, I think the Jaguars are really a four or five win team. And even if, you know, they play above what I think they're going to be, they'll win six games. And that's still under, in my opinion, like it would take a, I think just a godly season from Trevor Lawrence to win the, that seventh game. And, and I just don't see it happening um, again. Like, I don't think it's even just that it's urban Meyer. I think it's just that it's the Jaguars. Like they're not going to jump from being a one win team to being a seven win team. I don't see it. Like I love Trevor Lawrence, 
but I just don't, I don't see that happening as rookie year, um, especially with the offensive line that's in front of him. Um, yeah, we can question urban Meyer, um, but also that defense is still pretty cruddy. Like there's just a lot of things they still need to fix and it'll happen in, in two to three years. It'll happen, but not this year. They're not going to come out and win more than six and a half games, in my opinion. So I'll take the under um, guys in the comments, uh, as we wrap up this episode, what would you guys say I for did these two, three teams? Two rare things you wouldn't expect from me. So, <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. You know, open it up. You can, you can rant about how dumb Anish is. We get it, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, right. Niners, 10 and a half. Chargers nine and Jaguar six and a half. Tell us your over or unders or pushes uh, for those three teams, but we'll be back with you guys next week. Hopefully we get some more NFL news to talk about. And if you want us to do this same segment again, leave some teams down in the comments for us to do, but thank you guys so much for listening. If you enjoyed the episode, please consider hitting subscribe, hit the like button. If you're on Apple podcasts, leave a five-star review, but thank you so much. We will see you next time.